we'd like to thank a sponsor. <laughs> Pinadalan tayo ng first sponsor ever. Solid. Pinadalan tayo ng tinapay, sourdough ng likhang harina. Maraming salamat. Pati yung guest natin. Na uh, pala, ano. At previous guest, pinadalan din yeah, nila. Oh. Oh, thank you. Follow din na lang sa IG at sa likhang IG. harina. Yeah, May FB ba ang likhang harina? Wala yata eh. Sa alam ko, IG lang. So, actually, natry ko yung bread na na di ako mahilig sa bread eh. Pero masarap, <laughs> masarap, masarap. Ako mahilig, uh-huh. mahilig. Mahilig yeah. ako sa bread. So, Finfreeze ko, finifreeze ko, hindi, hatiin muna, tapos if freeze, tapos pag hapon, ah, tama, minimerienda oh. ko, nilalagyan ng butter, masarap, masarap. Tapos, nagkita tayo ng isang araw, galing oh, tayo oh. sa, ito very random, hindi natin to sponsor, pero magandang kwento. Nag-reach out lang sa Instagram, tapos inimbita tayo sa, sa planta, sa brewing, anong tawag doon? Brewery. Brewery. Brew- sa brewery ng Crazy Carabao. Yeah. Tapos, tinur tayo. Tsaka free, ano. At pinainom tayo. <laughs> so, medyo... Sarap. No, hap, anong oras yung mga 2pm pa lang tulog na ako eh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, uh, being a beer drinker naman, sarap ng ano, sarap ng beer nila. Alright. Mga, ano, malaho garden yung light beer nila. We'd like to thank uh, uh, si Lawrence. Yeah, Lawrence. Crazy Carabao. From Honduras. From Honduras, no? Oh. Dapat mag-guess rin natin siya kasi kakaiba rin yung story yan eh. Oo. Oh, oh. Ano pang ano? Ang nangyari sa akin kaninang maga, kaya ako medyo nagmamadali ngayon. Nagising ako ng 6, 5, 5 a.m. Nagising ako 5 a.m. Tapos... Nag-bike ako. Hmm. Di pa ako masyado nakakalayo. Mga 2 kilometers away from my house na flat. Oh. <laughs> so, Why the hell sa weather? Hindi ko alam eh. Pero kakapapulkanize ko lang nung bike na yun. Anyway, lakad ako pa uwi. Tapos, nag-set, nag, tinuloy ko na. Naglakad na ako ng pagkasoli ko ng bike. After mga 20 minutes. Naglakad ulit ako mga 20 minutes pa kasi bitin eh. Hmm. Hindi ako nag-bike ulit kasi baka nakinig ako sa universe, parang baka ayaw ako ipabike. <laughs> kasi so, random eh, hindi ba? Parang... May nangyari ba na sinabi mo na, ah, dapat nga pala hindi ako nag-bike? <laughs> eh, hindi na lang ako nag-bike, parang oo. Oh. <laughs> I mean, hindi ko may nangyari ba habang naglalakad ka na parang, oo oh, nga, no? buti hindi ako nag-bike. May nakita. Wala naman, wala naman. <laughs> Pero yun yung naisip ko. Baka ayaw ako ipag-bike ngayon. So, kasi rarely ako na-flat naman nang, nang walang nangyayari. Alam mo yun. Yung Minimaintain mo naman yung bicycles. Oo. Oh, very, ano naman. As in, kakapavulcanize ko lang nung isang araw. Hindi naman siya flat nung lumabas. So, nagulat ako na na-flat. Anyway. So, nakatulog ako. Tapos, pagising ko, te- nakatulog ako ng mga 7 a.m. siguro. <laughs> At pagising ko, 10 a.m. na tumatakbo ako, kaya pupungas-pungas ako ngayon. Yun yung tawag sa, sa amin. Pupungas-pungas ka pa dyan, ha? <laughs> Anong ginawa mo kahapon? Parang uh, interesting yung araw mo. Oo nga, no? Kahapon, nag-guest ako sa show ni Louie Ocampo at ni Rob Nivera. Ano to? Parang internet show? Or TV? Hindi, hindi. Cable TV show. Cable Malaki TV. production sa... Diyan lang pala sa Pasig ang, we- ang warehouse ng sound check eh, ni Jaime Godinez. Mm. So may para silang TV studio, makeshift TV studio. Maganda. Kasi parang ganda yung show. Kasama ko si, sa guests, kasama ko si Monty at si Nicole Asensio. Konting jamming, maraming kwentuhan. It's very, very interesting. Ano Tapos ganda? tumuloy ako kina Mong. May recording yung sandwich eh. May mga alam naman nun. Anong tinugtog mo sa, dun sa show? Vocals or drums? May drum set eh. So pinapakanta nila ako. Sabi ko pwede ba mag drums nila ako? <laughs> parang, parang rare mo makajam ng may tao na sipi mo magigitara sa'yo si, si Rob tsaka si Monty tsaka si Louie. Sobrang saya. Nandito na si 
Rob for good or vacation lang? Hindi ko alam eh. Or baka ah, dahil sa project? Siguro dahil sa project. Tapos yeah. nandun, si, nandun yung parents niya, si Martin and Pops, nanonood, mm. supporting. <laughs> Starstruck okay. ako kay Miss Pops. <laughs> Anong channel siya lalabas? Hindi ko alam. Cable channel eh. Hindi ko maalala. Ikaw, anong pinakaabalahan mo? Kahapon. Ano ba ginawa ako kahapon? Yun. Uh, ah, holiday pala, no? Kahapon. Mm. So, wala. Medyo nakarami rin ako nung Monday. Kaya parang kahapon, <laughs> relax lang ako eh. <laughs> parang pahinga lang. Getting ready for ano. Yun, yung guest natin today. Alright. So, segway. So, segway. Introduce ko na rin yung... Yes na. I'll give a few words. Actually, if you want to, ano, uh, if you want to give a few words muna para i dire-diretso ko na rin siya i-admit sa room. Okay. Oh. Ah. He's one of our good friends and his band is celebrating 20 years. Maraming kwento, pero ikaw na, ikaw na mag-introduce para ano. Okay. Um so our our next guest uh I believe has uh, cemented himself and his band, siempre, uh, in OPM OPM history. Parang feeling ko uh, they're in a relatively young, although twenty years na rin, Pero parang ang bilis nung pag take over nila nung industry. Parang sweeping talaga. Tapos uh, releasing album after album. Uh, tapos may mga deep cuts. Tapos may mga cathartic choruses at the same time. Parang Hit after hit, meron talaga sila. Maraming baon, kumbaga. Uh, now, celebrating 20 years in the industry, uh, I, I'm not, hindi, hindi, hindi ko siya personal friend. I mean, I'm, I'm not friends with him yet, just acquaintances. Pero, yun, I'm interested to find out. We're interested to find out in what he has to say. Without further ado, uh, our guest for episode 6 is Gabi, Gabi Alipe of Urban Dub. So, so. Good morning, classmate. Morning. Congratulations on 20 years. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> what do you what do you have in store? Uh last minute lang din kami nag-decide eh. So, I mean, we just wanted to sayang eh, dami mga plans sana for this year. We were supposed to do it do something with Kamikaze. Oh. Eh, eh, kasi uh, we're both celebrating 20 years. So, we were supposed to do something. Eh, nag pandemic. <laughs> so, um, and then Sila Cardi decided or thought about na, oh, tara, sayang naman 20 years, parang wala tayong gagawin. So, we just decided to do, do something lang na simple lang. And then at least uh, magkasama sama ole and hopefully, like, yung mga uh, people who actually want to watch the show, parang tambay ba? Tambay tuk tuk. So during the quarantine, I mean congratulations also on the on 20 years. Uh during the quarantine, kumusta naman uh, anong mga ginagawa mo lately? Uh online shows pa rin, a few here and there. Pero um most of the time it's more or less spent with family na lang, uh, family. I try not to play as much. And then uh yeah, tambay with Jacob, uh, family business, and then sulat kanta, <laughs> gawa na pandesal. Magawa ka rin ng ano, ng pat ng bread. Hindi siya masarap, pero <laughs> I, I'm I'm trying something new, something to keep my mind preoccupied. <laughs> Pagong craft. Uh, Gab, mm, sorry. Go ahead. Tell us about your ano. Uh, growing up, saan ka ba, saan ka ba lumaki? Sa Cebu, sa Manila, sa States? Um, uh, I grew up in LA, Lahog Apas, Cebu City. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, was born, I was born in Cebu. Uh, my dad's from Cebu, my mom's from Manila. They met here in Manila because uh, my, uh, my dad was working here. And then uh, they got married and then I was born in Cebu. Pero after... A year old, they came back to Manila. And then I lived here in Manila. I grew up in 
uh, first San Juan and then Kainta. Uh, sa Brookside, sa Kainta, Rizal. And then after that, grade 5, kasi my parents separated for 5 years eh. So when they got back together, uh, five, uh, grade 5, lumipat kami uli sa Cebu. Yung Kanino ka nagstay? With my mom, sa Manila. Sa Manila. Uh, my dad, when they separated, my dad went back home to Cebu. LQ sila, LQ. <laughs> Tapos, paano nag, ano, how did the, I mean, I guess yung guitar yung, I'm guessing yung guitar yung first instrument mo? Or yes. Guitar. How did it come into your life? Yung baga? Uh, guitar dahil, ano, I, I, I think, first introduction ko sa guitar was, uh, through my cousins, older cousins, because as the one, as one of the youngest, especially during our batch of cousins, no, uh, sa mom side, we were very close. Eh, I was the youngest, so lahat ng ginagawa ng older cousins ko kino copy ako lang. So whether it was sports like basketball or whatever, so nung na, na they got into playing guitar, parang oye gusto ko rin gusto ko rin matuto ganyan, ganyan. and then. Uh, my parents bought me this cheap Lee Lungs guitar for like 500 bucks. Uh, and then uh, started from there. But it was weird because I like rap. I like hip hop first. But uh, yun, when I started, uh, ano, pero parang, I was trying to make raps with the guitar. More of them, sure. And then first song I learned was ano, Horse with No Name in mm-hmm. America. Because two chords lang, tas madali. E minor, A7. <laughs> It's not too stressful for a kid's fingers. What? Was, well, oh, go, go, Darren. And, and what did you... Ano ano na, start na ba tayo? Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kala ko nag-gurguntuhan lang tayo. Ano yung, ano yung pinapangigan mo? Parang bakit, I mean, bakit a bread or bread first and then did you evolve into heavier stuff? Or paano siya nag-evolve? Um, natural progression lang. Um, in terms of music kasi, uh, my parents are, are, are both uh, music lovers, you know. So, with my mom's side, my mom was more of the pop side. Uh, my dad naman was more on the rock and uh, jazz side. So, sa so mom's side ko was mga Whitney Houston, Hope. OPM then like Ryan Tebyab or Basil Valdez, uh, Kulides, mga, mga ganun. And then my dad naman, when I'd visit him in Cebu, uh, it was actually my favorite uh, time growing up, was when I'd visit to Cebu, he had a vinyl collection and then doon nag-aramage ako ng vinyl niya. Mga Led Zeppelin, Beatles, uh, George Benson, uh, Sade, uh, lahat nun. And then my dad would be upset with me because, syempre, I like hip-hop, so I tried to scratch his <laughs> <laughs> mga plaka niya. Tapos napuputol yung needle. Kasi, you know, those old, uh, hindi naman pang scratch yun talaga. So, Belt just, drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Same. <laughs> Nasira ko rin yung sa tatay ko eh. <laughs> and I'd scratch up his records and stuff like that. But like, I would appreciate because I'd play all of those records and um, it was fun. San galing yung hip hop na sa na but but mo siya nagustuhan rap um, uh, LL Cool J um, and then syempre eventually Francis M when Francis M came out uh, uh, it blew my mind and then yun actually Francis M talaga yung parang ala, cool OPM is cool <laughs> being a uh, kid diba, nine, 9 years old ganyan ganyan tapos sayo sayo um, uh, and then that that's what led me to listen to more OPM that okay, Francis. Tapos paano nag ano like uh, with your influences and then uh, which is hip hop and then sa guitar uh, learning the guitar paano naman nag form yung urban rock. Yung unang, I mean yun ba yung unang band mo or when did you no, no. the, the uh, band, uh, you wanted to make perform bands. So, sa rock naman, so Francis M started it all. So, hip-hop. Because I, I like writing poetry. Eh. That's why I gravitated towards rap first. Because my mom would always encourage to write poetry or short stories or essays. And then, 11 years old, pinarinig sa akin ng mga pinsan ko uh, 
uh, ultra electromagnetic pop. I think Raymond knows. <laughs> and when you're 11 years old, uh, an impressionable youth, pag marinig mo yung lyrics ng pare ko, lalo na sa call, <laughs> And you're in Brookside, kainta. Parang, oh, are you sin, ah? <laughs> yes. And yeah, so, parang that, that parang, oh, pwede pa lang magbanda. And like, I, I, I kind of sparked that interest in being a, in a band. And what I loved about the heads, sorry, Rames, ah. Pero what I loved about it, it's like, I, I, in a lot of ways, I kind of related to even how they, the look and uh, the, the vibe, because it was simple. It was grunge, ba? Parang, kasi grunge, I mean, like, um, uh, I love the dawn. I love the I love after image. I love new callers also listening to those those bands. But rock star, eh? you know what I mean? Like they were all, they dressed up and the, the typical format of uh, what a rock star should be or how they should look. But Eheads was just like come as you are, Nirvana. <laughs> the field. That's why I kind of related or it, that that resonated with me more. And then the storytelling. So parang dun na nag shape. I wanted to be in a band. So when I eventually transferred to to Cebu, I carried that with me. And then in my school, in high school, sa Don Bosco, it was very encouraged, whether sports or music, that um, uh, may mga breaks. So it's either you picked up a basketball or you went to the music room and picked up a guitar. And completo lahat ng mga ano gamit, you just borrowed it. You just leave your ID, and then they'll let you borrow it. So wow. everybody will just jump. Paano yung sorry? <laughs> Eventually, yung yung first bad mo sa Cebu na hindi hindi sa Brookside. Hindi hindi sa Cebu na high school. First band na first band ko. I was in first year high school. First band ko. Kasi I was a dormer. By your first year, I was a dormer. Bakit? But do- but ka nag dorm? Malayo uh, sa bahay. Hindi siya malayo sa bahay, but my dad wanted me to parang learn independence, to be independent. Kasi parang seminarians yun nag nagrun nung uh, dormitory with inside the school. So matututo kang medyo parang kasi all boys school siya, so parang preso nga. Siri so bunk beds and then. Uh, you have to learn how to clean up after yourself. Tapos may mga chores. High, sc- high school to? High school, high school. Wow. High school. So, um, sy- syempre, iba-ibang uh, halo eh. From first, from first year until uh, seniors yung magka, magkahalo sa dorm. Eh. So, anong, anong valuable lessons and shenanigans ang napulot? Kasi dorm pero college na. Yeah. Diba? Anong impression ang nabigay sa iyo ng dorm life as a as a young man? What did you uh, learn? Independence, being independent, tapos pari pa yung mga kasama namin or mga brothers. So it was very strict. Um, Curfews, ganun? Oh, the lights out, definitely lights out. A very strict schedule. Eh. Uh, and you know how priests are or brothers are, pag hindi ka sumunod, talagang papaluin ka ng we had these diaries or following ka sa ulo. <laughs> Seryoso? Bawal. Yeah. Bawal yun eh. <laughs> Early 90s. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, they were very strict. I liked it. I, I didn't have any complaints. I actually liked the experience. Um, yeah, and then, kung ano yung pagkain sa, ano, you wake up, everybody wakes up early, you have to do chores, and then, uh, you have to set up the, your, uh, uh, recto, uh, rest, ano yun? Basta yung parang canteen yung kung saan kayo kakain. And then you have to wash the dishes, ganyan-ganyan. Nakita pa nga ako sometimes, pag ayaw nung isang studyante yung pagkain, talaga pipilitin ka ng pare kainin yun. Susubo na lang sa bibig. So natuto ako kumain ng walang arte. <laughs> Ubusin mo talaga yung ulam kahit na hindi mo trip. So yung band na first band mo, dun mo rin na-form. Okay. Yeah, dormers. Uh, they were a year older than me, a batch older, and then we became close because we we played in the. Because of course, may mga misa, may mga misa yung mga dormers, right? So, uh, dun kami nagkakilala because we started learning mga church songs, uh, yung mga sa mga hymnals to play during the the the, the masses that uh, the dormers would have, and then we decided to form a band. 
Kasi merong... Laging may mga band competitions eh. And mga band performances in school. It was in our school. It was very encouraged. Very much encouraged. So many really good bands from Cebu or musicians from Cebu who are established in Cebu came from our school. From Dun Bosco. Uh... So, um, si Puldo, Kanyada, came from Dun Bosco din. Uh, Franco. Sa Franco, yeah. Pero a batch way, way, way before. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi <laughs> uh, <laughs> nga Don Bosco pa yung tawag na Don Bukid pa, Don Bukid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Pero, I mean, um, yun, so we started a band and then, yun, we covered Eraserheads. Uh, we uh, we wrote a couple of songs and then I started a band then with my my batchmates, my friends, ganun din, Eraserheads, and then we wrote a song for uh, Nutrition Month eh. That's my band competition so we needed to write a song na na parang in line with Nutrition Month. So, I wrote a song called uh, Mang Danilo's Galactic Barbecue. Puro Tagalog. Kasi <laughs> we idolized yan. No? Yung unang band naman, may kanta kami na kanal. Uh, and then sounded Naka-re- like... Naka-record ba yan, Gab? Hindi, hindi. Sana pwede natin marinig. <laughs> Wild siya. I mean, like, yung sa dating, parang, Salamat, kanal. Ah, you say yo. Parang it was weird. It was it sounded like a Yana song. Kasi I chef big fans of Yano then. And then yun um with our my band naman ng mga batchmates ko, pangalan naman namin Electric Blue Balls. Mga <laughs> Very high school. And then yun, I eventually met up older batchmates cuz uh I think they thought I knew how to play guitar and then na aliw sila sa akin because I was I was so short and then I would play the guitar and I was very young. Doon na ako na namulat na biglang the older batch na no would invite me to play with them outside of school. And then we How does that work? Eh, di ba may curfew? And then, first, first year high school lang ako nag dorm. Actually ah, okay. my dad really wanted me lang just to try it out. Just to have that sense of uh, discipline. Discipline, uh, discipline and independence, you know. Pero throughout my high school years, so syempre, uwi na ako sa bahay. And then, uh, yun, we started performing na in the mga bars, auditioning, we'd play mga Juan de la Cruz, uh, we'd cover um, uh, Gin Blossoms, mga ganun, or uh, Collective Soul, the, the typical stuff during that time. And then, dun, nagsimula lang siya na nagsimula. <laughs> It just kept... At moving and moving, I kept going from one band to the next up until I met up with my bandmates. How how did it happen? Sino una mo na meet? Okay, so um, I I joined the band. I was so desperate to be in a band after college. I quit college. I quit college at, on my second year because I found I got a job. Sa Cebu pa to. Cebu, uh. Okay. Second year college, I tried. Uh, I I applied to any one seven Cebu to be a DJ. So I remember that. Yeah, when I got that job, parang wow. Like I, I wasn't really thinking about being in a band per se. Na talagang I would make it big or anything like that. Like I was just content being around music, de ba? So when I worked in NU, when I worked in NU, parang ito na I'm here. I'm in the music industry, so to speak, right? So I quit school. I told my parents I was gonna quit school and pursue this, and then. Uh, that's how I met uh, our former manager, si Alex Lim, si Urban Dub, because he had a production outfit. So I worked for him then. So we did all the big events of Cebu for San, oh. Miguel, for, San Miguel, for San Miguel Beer. I was a production assistant. So when bands from Cebu bands or Manila bands would come, I was a PA. I would, like, ah, okay. I would give you your water. I would give you your beer. I would help you to and fro from the venue to the, to the hotel. That's how I met Sila Francis Reyes, right? Uh, because I PA'd for the Don. Uh, when they were visiting. And then, um, si Lalay was a uh, brother of, a uh, uh, sister of Alex. Of Alex. And she's been playing since she was 14. And then John was her boyfriend at that time. And then I met them in college because we were in the same, we had the same course. Jan naman, I met through mga barkada ko, na skaters who were my batchmates and because they all skated together and they were, they had a band called Glitch. Mm. Yeah. Solid ng Glitch, by the way. Sorry. Yeah. 
everybody knew naman everybody like uh, the community the musicians in in Cebu the community is very small so I wanted to play in a band just for the fun of it so I I ended up playing in a band called Deus Ex Machina and then we cover I sa sobrang desperado ko to be in a band I played bass for that band so kasi kaya ako mag-bass para lang para lang masabi na makasali ako and then we covered mga filter filter nine inch nails uh, industrial ah. industrial siya <laughs> very industrial that's where i met Jed Donrado our he was our guitar player there si Jed naman was uh, his he needed to go back na to the states and then we felt bad yung bandmate ko nung si Jed we felt bad because like our yung mga kabanda namin Deus Ex didn't want to write original material so he told me na, hey, I'm leaving for the States, dude, and I have no remembrance of being a musician in Cebu. I want to write an album. I want to make something, diba? Before I leave, para may remembrance. So we decided, Tara, let's leave the band, man. Let's, let's just make our own. Let's just look for members. Like, I'll, I say, so don't you have songs? Because I made him, made him hear some of the songs that would eventually end up in our, our first album. And he liked it. So he was like, Tara, let's just record. Let's find a vocalist. Let's, uh, I'll play drums. We'll just look for other members to fill in the, the holes. And just, just record and leave. And he played with Lalay in a cover band with Alex Lim then called Side Dish. So, tara, let's invite Lalay na mag-bass. Total recording lang naman eh. Ganyan. Oh, recording. Oh, sige, sige. They were looking for a vocalist. Nobody wanted to join, join, join our band because we're relatively unknown. Well, me especially and si Jed. So, dude, it's just for remembrance anyway. Just sing your songs. It's your songs anyway. Just sing it. Doesn't matter. So we go, okay. <laughs> um, I'll try. And then we were looking for a guitar player now. For more or less, completo na kami. We were trying to audition guitar players. But somehow it didn't fit. And si John, since boyfriend, Shanilalay, would always tag along. John had two bands, like a ska band and a, reg- and a reggae band. So we didn't think that he was really into rock. Kala namin ska reggae siya na dude, diba? And then, he would eventually just go with us kasi uh, siya, siya yung roadie ni Lalay. One time we were auditioning a guitar player. The guitar player was like, couldn't get it. Sabi niya, ako ito, ito ganito yan, no? Kasi sa kakasama niya ba? Sa kakasama niya sa, sa practices, sa rehearsals, sa mga auditions. Like, he ended up learning the song just watching it. So he's like, akin yan, ito, ganito, this is how you play it, bro. Kasi kaibigan niyo yung guitar player niya. So we were like, oh, pwede naman pala si John sumali. Parang, pwede ba si John na lang? Sabi niya, gusto niya sumali, pero he wants to join. Pero uh, nahiya ba? Nahiya siya na to ask. So we said, might as well, let's, let's go. Let's just get him. Total, recording lang naman eh, di ba? So it, that's how more or less we started. We just recorded the songs. With what little budget that we have, and then um, it got on the radio because si Jed was a DJ for a radio, a pop station, and then parang since he was gonna leave anyway, nagrebelde siya sa pop station and played our songs <laughs> on his on his during his board work. But if they fire me, I don't care. I'm leaving anyway. <laughs> but, but so uh, rock and roll. Yeah, well, I'm leaving anyway. So if they fire me, I don't care. Diba? Tipik, ano, so, eh, people started calling in. They started calling in, and then the program director was like, who's this band? Uh, you're, you're playing. So, oh, this is my band, uh, Urban Dub. So, oh, okay. oh, who named it? Who uh, named we, it? Uh, we, we named it. We, we had okay. a list of, of names. Urban Dub yung nagsimula, because when we were forming the parang chemistry ng banda, ang original idea was, ano, ang original idea was parang sublime. 311. Oh, okay. So, may regation na feel. That's why the song Sailing, yeah. parang ganun dapat yung original plan. Pero somehow, it just veered away to medyo parang na-influence talaga ng Deftones na vibe. I don't know why, but it just kind of happened that way. And then, uh, even if you listen to some of the old songs in the first album, like song like Eating Me, parang ganun yung vibe. Eh. May mga parang Goldfinger, parang very punk, reggae punk rock type of, of vibe. And then it just kind of went left. And then the name stuck. We never really actually changed it. No? 
Wala naman kami iniisip na ano eh, parang just to have a name. Di ba? So, so yeah. you got played first in a pop, pop station before NU. A pop station before NU. Tapos paano nag ano, parang paano nag crossover kasi dati naririnig ko kuno are uh, parang major big deal na underground thing na oy yung urban dub nandito sa Manila may gig ganyan. Pero parang hindi kayo parang ang alam ng Manila nasa Cebu pa rin talaga kayo. So parang paano yung crossover ng music niyo into Manila? How did that start? Um I'll, say, I'll just say my version ah, of the story. I, I really don't know what... Uh, this is how I view it. Yun nga, I was working as a production assistant for San Miguel Beer for all their big events. And then the dawn came to, to Cebu. I, we already finished our first independent album called Burn. Right? So we had demos. Na kami. May de- more or less, that was our de- first demo. I was their PA. So... Hinintay ko na matapos yung event so I'd bring sila from the hotel, Marriott Hotel to the venue parking lot ng Ayala Mall. And then I knew that Francis Reyes was uh, worked for NU and hosted in the raw. So I kind of figured na maybe if I'm nice enough, I'll give him my demo and he can play us on in the raw. So that's all I was thinking. And then so after the night was over, I gave him the birth album na Hopefully, he can play it sa in the row. And then I never heard anything from that. And I, 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 I believe na my, a sandwich, I think, came to Cebu. And then, I don't know, you guys saw us play Yata in Ronnie's. And then, that's when Myrene went back to Manila. And then, I said, I gave my demo. I gave my demo to Francis uh, for in the row. Pero, ah, and I think my... Kwento. And then, I think Myrene looked for the CD and then started playing us. And then, I, I gave, I think... At that time, I also gave the demos now for songs that would be part of the Influence album, the second one. I think Soul Searching, uh, uh, Soul Searching, Runaway, and, and Would You Go, yata, yung first three that we recorded at that time. And I was able to give to you guys, I think. Huh? What I remember was, I think Mike was working for a record company. Yeah. I'm not sure what it was. It was Octo Arts or Viva. They were on a uh, parang A&R trip with Sancho, yeah. who is now with the Don. Yeah. Pero they were both A&Ring in Cebu and they watched you guys. Mm. And then, kaya, tapos, I think it was, kaya niya sinabi, hey, you gotta, you gotta check out these guys. Kasi nakilala niya yata si na Alex. Yeah. So when Sandwich was in Cebu, Si Alex took us to see you guys. And then, yeah, yun yung connection ng story pala. Uh, okay, okay. So si Mike, you know, na... Si Mike ang alam ko na una with Sancho. And he was <laughs> raving about this band. So, you gotta see this, guys. You gotta see the scene. Wait, before we go to Manila, I want to ask, very, very curious, I want to ask, how was the Cebu scene? Kasi I saw it in the very, very early 90s. And ever since, up, up to this day, the scene is very mysterious to Manila people. Mm-hmm. Even even kami na bumabalik balik kami very mysterious because the playing is very high level and madaming malaki yung scene. Why why do you think ganon? Ano may may nagstart ba noon? Meron bang parang may bar lang ba na isa or I know you have a recording studio where everybody records. Tell us about it. Uh, my interpretation of it. Yes. Um, uh, ang hari during that time, uh, early ni- uh, late nineties, uh, early two thousands. Well, at, at least for me, for my generation or my era, yeah, uh, I was still trying to uh, make it within the the community, right? Ang hari in Cebu was show bands. Yes. Okay. Pa- Palinisa ng tugtog. So, kung hindi ka plakado sa Cebu you're going to get booed off stage regardless if you're covers or not so a lot of bands took from that na the, on, the only way you can get a slot in festivals na sponsored events like let's say a sinulog or whatever is kung plakado ka tumugtog as same as the show bands kasi kung hindi ka at par with the show bands uh, hindi ka hindi ka sasalang and then 
bands started really honing their craft in terms of playing because walang well, gigs. So all you can do is practice. <laughs> so all we did was just practice. That, 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 was, that was the only thing that bands could really do is just like go to a, a, a rental place na studio and then just practice and uh, write songs. And then nakatulong yung digital age in terms of recording because now recording was cheaper. And then Backyard came around. Backyard was, I think Backyard was the biggest catalyst. The studio, Backyard, the that, studio. That studio was the biggest catalyst because when it opened, it was, uh, recording was much cheaper. And then Mick, Mick kinda, was kind of like a mad genius in terms of being a sound engineer. And then he was a really respected musician as well. He was a, a really great drummer for TSK in the 90s. And then uh, Smooth Friction eventually uh, formed a band called Smooth Friction. And then everybody, all the bands from different genres started just congregating there. The, the scene was strong because of that. Dahil everybody just started hanging out regardless of genre. Everybody would just talk, drink. Kasi pwede mag-inuman eh. Order ka ng beer from the kitchen. Buy it. Tapos may pagkain, may food. So sometimes, even if you're not recording, you'd go there for the food. Or parang kay pag-inuman. And eventually, somebody at some point during the day is recording. Lalabas, oh! Diyan ka pala. So tara, smoke, inom, kain, kwentuhan, talk about music, talk about pananaw sa buhay, kulitan. So everybody became close and then everybody just learned from each other. So that was very good for, especially for Urban Dub because of formative years din namin yun. As musicians and also as adults. <laughs> so yung influence sa Cebu nyo rin ni Record or sa Manila na? Our first three albums, uh, we recorded Birth in Cebu, we recorded Influence in Cebu and Backyard. And then, even when we got signed, when we got signed, uh, when uh, so our first major label release under EMI at that time, Embrace, we opted, we asked EMI na, we still record that album in Backyard in Cebu. Para, kumbaga, um, tribute then and, I know, homage to where we come from and I, I thought we thought that it would just it would be right then to record our first major label album in the studio where we started but indie kaya talaga i mean uh, based on what i've read is like you, you guys are indie and then you just have major label distribution or is no. it no we got signed talaga. we got signed to uh, uh when we, we were able to play uh rock awards no 2004 or 2003 Siyempre, mga labels would be there. Uh, executives would be there. After we performed that show, that's when we started getting uh, offers. And then we just decided to go with EMI because we were so happy with EMI dahil especially our boss at that time, si Boss Chris. Because sila lang yung label din na lumipad to go to Cebu to meet with them. Oh. They flew. And then we were kind of, siyempre, parang medyo arrogante being kids because siyempre, major label horror stories, but we were kind of scared. So we were kind of like, sige, demand lang tayo. Tingnan natin. So, uh, <laughs> tingnan natin kung papayag sila. Uh, we want full creative control of our music. Kung ano yung bibigay namin na kanta, yun lang yung ilalabas ninyo. And Find then, uh, parang, kung baga, hindi na yung katulad nung dati na with gear na parang, kasi I was able to experience that after the first album, may nag-offer sa amin na, na label, na sign, pero sabi nila na, Ah, uh, this particular song in the alb in, in your songs. Pwedeng ganito lang lahat ng style. And then pwede pa kayo gumawa <laughs> pa ng ibang kanta para makadagdag sa single. So I took that with me into that meeting sa EMI na para kung ano yung bibigyan namin sa inyong kanta, yan yung kanta namin. It's it's like a, a body of work. And then um we have full creative control. You don't dictate to us what we're going to do. Kasi for us we were like if we don't get signed, we never expected to be here anyway. My, like we were very much content and comfortable just being in Cebu releasing the, these in the albums, you know what I mean? And then they flew to when they flew to Cebu. Parang we were like, oh, parang serious siguro tong mga to. because they were the only ones who did that. So we were like, sige. And then they said, yeah, yeah, whatever you guys want, I know. But can you be based in Manila? Dun na kami medyo kami naman yung parang ball is in your court. Na parang well, if we want to take this thing seriously, you know, since signed na rin tayo, might as well try it out. You know? but, but you guys had jobs in Cebu at the time. 
di ba? Uh, uh, I did. I didn't have a job. In, well, I was doing odd jobs, mga production work, production outfit work. And then, um, Lale naman, si Lale naman and John were finishing, finishing their thesis in college. Oh, college pa lang sila noon. Yeah, yeah. Because when we started Urban Dao, I was only 19. 18, actually, 18. And then, when we first came to Manila, when, when, uh, uh, when Marine invited us, I, I was only 22. 22 years old. It was fun. Very eye-opening yung unang Manila game namin. Saan time. yun? Marikina, Riverbanks. No way! <laughs> yeah, Riverbanks. Ah, NU! NU, NU. Oh my God! So first time ko kayo nakita was the first time I saw Chico Sai. Yes. So, I, I remember that. Yeah. Hapon. Hapon, yes. That was, yes, that was wild. Yeah, kasi first, first time ko kayo nakita sa Manila. Was yeah in Marikina. I remember. Yes. And then remember she helped us show. with she helped us with admit one shows with Silvin. With Vin, Sina Vin. Yeah, with Sina Vin. So we were very happy, naman. Pero I opening kasi first gig mo and you event tapos malaki. And then mm-hmm. when you pagpas, literally para kami mga fab kasi fresh off the boat kasi nagbarko, di ba? So. Ay nagbarko talaga kayo. Yeah, that's why we had those banners na WG na eh, after mga bar <laughs> We needed to take a picture with the ba- with the the banner. Oh. Kasi yun yung deal. Back and forth na trip namin would be by boat. Asti! <laughs> Wala kaming pera for flights eh. Lalo mo kami mga tarbaho. My first gig in Cebu was by boat din. Yeah. Baliktad! <laughs> well, nag-open kami for the intro voice. Yeah. Pero by boat din. Sa so, so ikaw, wow, asti. So, I know yeah. the feeling, asti. <laughs> yeah. It was funny, funny in that sense. Pero pagpasok mo ng backstage sa ano, shepherd bang all the bands, nandun yung slap, andun ng color thread. Oh my god, slap shock! Oh my god, I was like, parang uh, napapanood ko lang kayo sa music bureau. <laughs> music bureau. <laughs> parang yun, I mean, why? Like so, nasa isang tabi lang kami. Like we were just quiet, like just watching all the bands. Uh, nakatambay lang sila doon. Parang ang wild sa akin, na one of my favorite songs, like, was Paglisa ng Color Thread, tapos nakikita mo lang si Kukichua. Nandun, nagbabasa. Umiinom. Umiinom. <laughs> Umiinom. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but like, it's here, it's, it's, it's sinabi mo. Come on! <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was, it was, uh, Surreal, a surreal, a very surreal experience. I can, I can like vividly remember everything. And then, while you're basking in the glory of, all, in the presence of all of these people you idolize, but lang, bumukas na lang yung back, yung back, yung backstage or bumukas. Meron ng hawak ng bouncer sa leeg na nakit, pinuupa ka nyan ganon. Like, kami, wow, ganito dito. <laughs> Talaga. So it was shocking. It's very shocking for us. And parang, I don't know, just something clicked. And we were all hooked. We were like, wow, we need to be here. <laughs> we, we need, I've never seen anything like that before. Like, uh, lalo na in Cebu. Because we'd always play really early in the, in the evenings or afternoon. We would always be openers. Because we weren't, we weren't the biggest band in Cebu. Diba? Parang reliable lang ba? Kami lagi. And then we're just one of the many uh, uh, artists during that time that we would just release independent albums. Kasi yun yung more or less naging uso eh, na pwede mong gawin. So it was, just, it was just a fun fun experience. And then yun, tuloy-tuloy na. Pagdating niya nung Manila, uh, tapos na yung Influence? Or which album? No, we, we were finishing Influence. So in the first time we came to Manila, we were finishing it. We were a few songs down. Konti na lang yung kulang. Parang ganun. But Soul Searching was already playing. Because yun nga, I, I think I gave the first three songs na demo to my kay Mary. Kaya siya nagka-airplane na sa, sa in the row and in NU. And then, that's why we were invited by Mary to perform in that uh, in that Marikina event. Parang ganun. That's wild eh. First time ko makita ng mosh pit. Kasi hindi naman nagmumosh yung mga tao sa amin sa Cebu eh. Ah. <laughs> when, we, when we play. Wala nung mosh pit sa amin din eh. Wala pa noon. Wala pa kasi pinapan... Wala well, nung mosh sila pagkilala nila yung banda. Ah, okay. Like, I mean, 
But with us, when we play, yung naka, nakatingal, nakatitig lang sa amin. But we'd know if they liked how we played kasi papalakpak. I remember nung yun, yung first ko nga sa Cebu, ganun din ka, ka wild kasi it was it was glam rock. Glam that rock. Was, that, was, okay. that was the scene. Glam rock. Tapos literally nagsusunogan ng cymbals may pyro on stage tapos so ganun naman ako naman yung na-shock nung first time ko sa Cebu sino nga yung bands na yun yung may may guitar shop eh si Eds ba yun? si Eds Abyss Abyss the Abyss, the Abyss we, Cygnus yes huh? we got along really well with Abyss Those bands. Those and toured bands. actually toured with them for a while mm. when we when we returned Cebu and the other towns yeah. sila we'd always hang out with them always always metal Diba? Yeah. <laughs> Pati yung downtime nila metal eh. Yeah. <laughs> si si Eds yung una kong nakit, nakitaan na merong reflective na guitar, parang mirror siya. Para siya mirror. So pag tumatama yung ilaw, nagguglow yung guitar niya. <laughs> And then siya lang yung una kong nakitaan na may wireless. <laughs> may But wireless. he's still active, di ba? I still see his shop near the airport. Yes. Diba? I haven't seen him in a while, but parang ha. Tapos, how was, ano yung challenges when you guys, and what year did you, the, the whole band transferred? What what, what, are, what were the challenges? Um, 05. Kasi, 05. 05, yun nga, when we signed, uh, ano, when when the album was about to come out, the Embrace album was about to come out, kasi umuwi pa kami, syempre, to record the album. 2004. Paano yung usapan nung banda? Like, did you sit down and say, like, hey guys, got, how did it happen? Oh, uh, after the yung Rock Awards, si so, so Jan Jan yung pumalit kay Jeros, so, di ba? Mm-hmm. Jeros left the band and then pursued his uh, law uh, law studies. And then uh, Jan Jan replaced him. And wait, then... wait, wait. Sorry. In your story, si Jeros is Jed? Is it the same guy? No, Jed Dinrado was the first one. He actually built the band. Okay, then, he left. He when, eventually went to the states. Yeah, sorry. When okay. he left for the states, si Jeros yung pumalit. Okay, then, okay, okay. The first, I thought the same guy. Yeah, the first few runs in Manila, yun Marikina, ganon ganon. Mm-hmm. Leading up to the Rock Awards, it was Jeros. So Jed recorded the first album. Jed recorded the first album. Jeros recorded the second album. The second third, album. Third okay. album, the major album, it was Janjan. Si Janjan na sa label. Okay, sa okay. label. Yeah. Okay, carry on. How yeah. did the uh, decision to go decide? Yeah, we, since we were signed, we 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 figured na oh, tara, let's try and make this a career since this is a good opportunity. I mean, iilan lang naman talaga yung mga Cebuano bands that had have were given the opportunity to be actually signed to a major label. You know what I mean? In my recollection, the only one that I actually really knew about was Roots. So, Roots was the only one, and they actually even won a best album package in Sarah Awards before. And then with Sheila and the Insects, the man, um, they were still indie. They were never signed to a to a label. So I, we kind of just wanted to follow in their footsteps. Na parang dapat meron pa rin a uh, Cebuano representative in Manila to be able to play. And if we're given that opportunity, might as well just tara, let's run with it. And then let's see what we can do. So even before we moved to Manila, I was already talking with Sila Bisoy, with Sila Ayan Zafra, like, well, what was the experience like? What was the experience like? Oh, like, uh, you have to live like this and ganyan, ganyan. Ito yung mga pagdadaanan nyo when you get there. So, okay. So we're more or less kind of prepared. Even si Franco, si Franco at that time was able to experience going to Manila for rock, uh, jag rock bivwa. Na, ano, so he, na contest or something and they performed in Manila so they had also that experience so like shared in sila what the experience was like so um, it, it really helped us a lot in our transition and then we kind of expected that we were going to struggle at first so in our minds it wasn't really about us it was about parang following in their footsteps and rep, rep, representing so the struggle didn't really we didn't really mind it we actually really enjoyed it because it was expected we expected it so small house a small house in Sikatuna Bliss building 8 all of you all of us including so, Alex including Alex so Alex and Lale would share a room kasi si syempre princess Lale she needed her, her own room and then there was another room that was 
we gave that room to Jan Jan para he can rest his back. Kasi yung sa drums. Yung ano. And then me and John slept sa mga couch. Wow. Sa, sa sala. So, um, yung style ko, since I'm the I'm the front man, akin yung long couch. <laughs> <laughs> and then si John, siya kanya yung, ano, yung, ang ginawa ni John yung, di ba, so may long couch and then may dalawang couch na maliliit, di ba? Ang ginawa ni John, pinagsama niya yung dalawa. So, mukha siyang crib. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny and then takes and then the the house didn't have a kitchen so an investment first investment I mean as a band was we bought a thermos uh sa shopwise yung thermos the pang init ng tubig na may coil sa, sa loob kasi for us dual purpose na yun kasi pwede ka mag-init ng kape uh, for coffee tapos pansit canton yay so doon namin nilalagay yung pansit canton. And then, pag nag-boil na siya, kailangan mo lang ng tinidor kasi pag binuksan mo, sumasabit yung pansit canton doon sa coil. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> kailangan mo siya sungkitin. <laughs> sungkitin. And then, when we'd have a good gig, when we'd have a really good gig, tapos uh, may konting bayad, ang celebration namin was pizza. It's pizza. Order ka pizza. Hat. And then, karinderya kasi... In Teachers Village naman, ang daming mga karinderia sa may glories. Remember the old glories? Yes. Na, na ano, so, and then may unang sikat na pare. So, y- yung dalawang karinderia sa may glories at unang sikat yung uh, food for the day. Yan. So, uh, about, ano, I think yung Soul Searching would be your first parang breakout single, no? Or baka, yes. I'm not sure, One. pero parang, uh, what would you, what what can you say about yung what influenced the song parang or what what's it about if if you don't mind sharing um so searching actually was supposed to be part of the first album but i never really got around to finishing it um you know being in high school being in college formative years and then i was going through a lot in terms of like i didn't know where i was going to go kasi tapos pinili ko pa gustong gawin is music. Siyempre, di ba, di mo naman alam if you're gonna make it in music or not, di ba? So, uh, I was very unsure and then unsure of myself. So, I was going through a tough time. Uh, uh, a, a really tough time in terms of finding myself. So, dun lumabas yung kanta. Uh, and then eventually, I finished it when I was, when we were outwardly writing for, influ- uh, for influence. Kasi yung sa birth, these were all songs I wrote when I was in high school. That's parang sige, since we needed songs, tara ganyan. So even the arrangement, if you listen to how we recorded it, meron pa nga ako mga vocal tracks na nakalimutan ko yung lyrics pero tinuloy ko lang. Na 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 na. And the songs were very long kasi kumbaga we just practiced the song simple arrangement, tara record. Kasi it was just for remembrance. We weren't really we weren't really looking to make a polished album. Uh, but when we were transitioning into influence, parang tara, let's let's really start writing something like uh, mas may arrangement, mas may meaning, mas pinag-isipan ba even the whole theme of the the album. So dun ko na tapos yung soul searching. It helped me a lot because parang yung mental health issues and uh, depression and handling that stuff at that part of uh, at that time in my in in, in my life. Yung, di- yung discipline nyo sa, sa studio, I've worked with you. I've seen your discipline sa studio and the live shows. Saan san ang galing yun? Dis- discipline? Oh, I, I don't know. We... Who, ins- who instilled it in the band? O- all of us eh. Kasi parang we don't want to waste each other's time. So even before kami sumasalaw, normally when we go in to record, we normally really practice first. And then uh, pra- we practice hours and hours before. Because when, when, especially our formative years, very konti lang budget namin to afford how to record. So sayang yung per hour ba? <laughs> Ang mahal ng per hour. So at least para sa amin, when we go into the studio, 
minimal na lang ba yung yung mga changes para hindi malaki yung bayad so that just kind of carried over with us as as we were as we moved along um we always tried our best to come prepared when, when especially for studio work so again do not start in discipline if you can call it that but in in reality for us kasi we just enjoy doing it <laughs> so major focus cha when you when you enjoy something you're focused in what you want to do speaking of uh, sa songwriting process niyo how does it start is it uh, you or parang jam paano siya nag how do you make songs? in ur- in urban dub we all have our roles so to speak so the the songs start with me basic arrangements like the idea the concept uh what the vibe will be like more or less and then i relay that to my bandmates and then sila na bahala mag-interpret uh nung song on their own instruments and then once they have that down and then we all arrange it together like how do we polish it and uh, how do we make it uh uh cohesive within all of us na lahat magi-enjoy pag tinugtog tong tinugtog yung kanta para How does it differ now that some of the members are in different parts of the world or country? Uh, then we don't write songs. <laughs> <laughs> solved! The Problem uh, solved! I mean, it's different kasi to write for Urban Dub now. I mean, uh, um, we're, we've always been the type that we don't just write for the sake of writing. I mean, there has to be like a It has to be organic, and then I guess, parang since we drifted apart, so to speak, because Janjan is in the in the in Australia, and then Lalay, when when we had that hiatus thing, parang we didn't see each other for years. Like I didn't see, I didn't jam with John for jam with John. <laughs> I didn't play with John or perform with John or wrote anything with John for two years. Okay. Si Lalay naman three years. Bago kami nagkasa masama ulit. So. Sempre may nagkakaroon kayo ng change ng mindset and having kids and like that and then you're not always together so individually also you kind of kind of change diba your priorities change your mindsets change and as you get older then siguro the same way that my mindset now is very different to who I was when I was in my 20s so i can't see myself yet writing for for urban dub in that sense because okay. it's very specific what 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 we did or what we do or the themes and then if it happens it happens and then that's why now it's it's nice that we're actually starting to na coming up are starting to like get together again in, in, in this way online and then hopefully kung something comes out of it then then we'll pursue it but um, it always has to for us it always has to be organic The, the entire theme of our career has always been organic. Kumbaga, a day at a time. Oh, nangyari to. Okay. And then, oh, nangyari yun. Oh, yeah. Doon tayo. <laughs> so, um, uh, we kind of just follow that pattern. For us, ha, ganun lang. Simple lang siya. Sa, sa mga music videos niya, napansin ko lang, parang I think may connected yung dalawa, no? Na music video. What was it like uh, working with uh, Maria Hamora? Wild. Actually, all the directors we work with are all wild. <laughs> wild, <laughs> wild. Panches Guerra, Quark uh, Inares. Quark <laughs> Inares. Yung pangan na kato ay Quark. Eh. Quark so happy go lucky and very bright as a person and then makes one of our <laughs> most violent music videos <laughs> to the point they got banned, di ba? So it, it it was it was weird in that sense, but all of them are very creative people. Our first video, our first major label video, was directed by uh, Lee, uh, ng Slap, and then uh, Jaime Paseno also was there. Pancho and Marie, Marie, Marie is wild because like she she was able to execute like a a music video for us. Because magkadugtong yung videos na yun, yung uh, first of summer and endless. So parang talagang it was well planned out how she wanted it to happen na parang sige you release first of summer ano and then you follow up after three months the patience ba and the the thinking in advance to do something like that because we shot 
the endless and first of summer in three days knowing fully well na ito muna yung lalabas and then ito yung kasunod. Parang ganun. So, uh, the way she, she and, uh, and the way she did it and the way her team executed the whole thing, we were like, wow, thank, thank you. <laughs> Salamat <laughs> na nagawa niyo yun for us. So, it was fun. Fun working with her, with Marie. Actually, Actually with all of them. <laughs> it's also, favorite ko rin yung Deftones siya pala na no, Ordinary Love. So, uh, what was it like actually opening for them nung nandito sila sa Manila? Surreal. Kasi yun talaga yung idol namin na band. Na kami na rin silang version, di ba? Ng, no yeah. Ordinary no Ordinary Love. Did you guys But ever talk about it? Or parang, oi? No. <laughs> I'm sure they they don't know na we did a cover. <laughs> no, no, ordinary, uh, no Ordinary Love. Um, surreal to open for the band na If there was any other band na we open for it, Deftones, parang for me, it would be like my dad opening for the Beatles, for his generation. For me, it was like that. So parang yung idol na idol mo talaga na banda na. Ganito, ganito, ganito ako ka-starstruck. I had all my rare CDs and DVDs of the Deftones, I brought it there because I knew I was going to meet them, right? So backstage, nandun sila, I'm talking to Chino. Sa harap ko na siya. I had everything in my, in the back of my, behind my back. I was holding it now. Talking to him. The whole time. Siguro, we were talking for about 15 minutes. Like, wow! Nagkwekwentuhan lang kami. Kasi, di, hindi na sila umuwi ng hotel after their sound check. Eh. Nandun na sila tumambay sa tent nila. They were smoke, smoking up and everything. <laughs> so, It was fun. I was talking to him the whole time. And then, oh, alright, thank you. Bye. That was umalis, umalis siya. That was hawak-hawak ko pa rin lang. That was hindi ko. Hindi ko. Ganun ako ka starstruck na hindi. But that was more precious, di ba? Conversation yes. is more precious than... Yes. My, my favorite part was when we, were, when we did our sound check, they were watching our sound check. So, Chino was by the stage. Si Steph was on stage. Sa likod ng amp ni Lalay, nagkakape, nag-Yossi. And then Abe and Serge, Sergio, their bassist, nasa harap sa scaffold din ako ganun. Oh my God. So, <laughs> How can you play? How can you play? <laughs> nakapik, nakapikit. And then the fun part, that wasn't even the fun part. The fun part was, um, the, nung nag check sila, they played their entire set. Wow. Oh my God. So, and kaya ito sa very bittersweet memory na rin for me now because kasama ko si Jamie while watching them. Oh. So, magkatabi kami ni Jamie on the side of the stage watching the entire set. So, basically, we watched them twice that night. Naiiyak ako sa kwento na yun. Grabe. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And then, that's why I love that story because it also shows how thoughtful of a person Jamie was. Dahil when, while we were watching Deftones, ni nudge niya ako and then he said alam mo kung sino matutuwa na mapanood to na wala dito sabi ko sino si Bubu our friend Bubu from Cebu who used to play bass for Glitch who's such a big Deftones fan as well but he couldn't fly in to Manila because of work pero parang barkada ko na yun ha si Jamir pa yung nakaisip na magugustuhan to ni, ni Bubu yung parang so random he said tawagan mo so I called Bubu gave the phone to Jamir so oy Bubu makinggan mo to I mean, just held up my phone and let me see the death tones. <laughs> I mean, it's mean but thoughtful at the same time. <laughs> I mean, di ba? But I mean, for him to think think of somebody else na, you know, he could easily just watch the show and watch the, you know, without saying that. And then just Represent. Tawag and destroy. Yeah. Just, uh, that, I, that, I, I carry that, that story with me. Not only because like, We watched the whole set. It's a performance level. Ah. Performance Talaga, level. So they sound check for you. They performed for you. Oh my they performed God. the entire set. So, oh talagang, my God. Mga, mga galaw-galaw ni Chino, andun sila, Steph. Ah, parang, ah. Tapos, and then, syempre, pag stop, you're in an empty state, or arena, right? Or whatever that, convention hall. Yung mga inside jokes nila kwentuhan on stage, maririnig mo. <laughs> <laughs> So, pumapalak pa kayo? Oo. 
<laughs> what a treat! <laughs> oh oh my wild. god! And then we watched them that night. Shempre when they performed, na so parang it was two shows in one night. Oh my god! One without anybody there, and then one with the whole entire crowd. You could feel the energy, talaga. What like a how story! Would respond to them. Yeah. Okay, ma ma iba naman ng konte. Tell us about your other interests. But I know you you did a project, yung beach project. You did a solo album. You were part of Franco and is doing mixed martial arts. In any order, tell us about these things that you're interested in. Uh, yung okay, sige. Beachhead, Beachhead came about because I have big reggae influence because I'm coming from Cebu, right? The reggae community is really huge in Cebu, and I got influenced by that. Um, so learning about reggae and whatever, I also gravity towards the Beach Boys. I already started that project while I was still even in Cebu with with some friends. Yun sa backyard pa rin, mga backyard na tropa from reggae bands and whatnot. When I moved to Manila, I just carried that with me when I met sila Pat Halbuena from Kerplunk. Because we'd always go to the beach, we'd always go to Matuod, dun sa parang rest house nila Migi Matute. His family, which, di ba, we hung out there a lot. Uh, yeah, a few times, yeah, yes. A few times with skimboard. And I got, parang, I told them, I have these songs. You have recording equipment. We're basically a band. Uh, okay. Because they're from guys from Angulo, di ba? So, para, para, let's record these songs just for fun, right? I said, play it in the beach with them. I have these songs na beachhead. Like, and see si Pat being Pat, like, oh, let's record that. Okay, so that's how it started. With Franco naman... Wait, did you release an album as no, Beachhead? No. But it, what is, what were they, the songs recorded? Some songs were recorded. Okay, so, so Pat it, has it, siguro. Pat, Pat has it. Pat, and Pat Migi, Pat and Migi. <laughs> yeah. And... Nag-freeze. Yeah, nag-freeze siya. Akala and ko eh. And then, convince siya ni... Oh no, my internet. It's okay. You're back. You're okay? back. back. Alright. Si Jan Jan, Bowie, and Eight convinced Franco to come home. From the States? From the States to okay. record record his songs. So, since Barkada, parang tara, sige. Let's, let's do this together. And that was a fun ride being with the uh, people na... You, you really consider like your brothers and then you know you're building something from the ground up so it was it was a fun experience with the solo project the solo project was interesting for me because that was the first time that i i stepped out of my comfort zone in terms of being a songwriter because being used to the default settings of urban dub like i wanted to explore songwriting naman na I think babalik. Sige lang. Naputol na ano? Mm -hmm. Di reconnect na lang I think. Sige lang. Ano kaya? Um I message mo na lang. Yung din ng kwento no? Oh. Ayan, na-disconnect na lang. Na-disconnect siya. Reconnect na lang sabihin ko. Sige lang. Ayan, he's back. Alright. Wala, ganun talaga Pilipinas. Mabagal lang na. Sige lang. May ano naman tayo. He's back. Hello. I don't hear it. Sorry, yeah. No problem. No problem. Di naman siya. Pick up tay. Pick up tay sa. Where was I? Ah, doing the solo thing. Yeah, solo. Sorry, yah. Masada mo ba? Masada ba ako madaldal? No, no, no. It's perfect. Perfect. Oh, sakto sa. And I. And my memory is just like all over the place. I'm trying to remember all of these things, so I, I apologize if I'm like going off like different tangents. No, no, like no. now. <laughs> anyway, where where were we before it was set up? The solo project. The solo. 
Oh, yun. Uh, solo, the solo thing was mainly parang I wanted to experience or explore what it would be like uh, outside of my comfort zone as a songwriter. Who am I? As a, The main question was, the concept was, who am I as a songwriter outside of Urban Dub, right? So, ang naisipan kong concept was to break myself down as a songwriter and then the songs within the album that I wrote were like, the songs were like different representations of my influences growing up as a musician. So, the first song was more or less parang dark electronica, na, na yung theme. And then I have, I have a song, Visions, which was basically hip-hop. Hip-hop yung, yung, yung um, influence niya or inspiration niya. And then I have a song called Paalam, uh, 90s alternative, uh, Eraserheads. Kaya nga, tuwan-tawa ako when uh, Sir James and, and Sir Bud like, <laughs> agreed to record that song with me. Because parang it went... It, Hindi mo lang, hindi niyo lang alam para ako naiiyak habang nagre-record kayo. <laughs> I, was, I, was very, I was very grateful. I was very grateful na you guys said yes to that project because like it it gave it gave more it gave more meaning sa akin ba na. It gave more meaning sa akin because like that was that was that song was specifically written because of that that era. Your oh. era. Oh, thank you for having us. We had a lot yeah. of fun recording. Sa tower yun, di ba? Sa tower tayo. Sa tower. Sa old tower. It was old tower. Kaya actually kami ni Eric Perlas, when you guys were doing your Contra Gapi na, na style, <laughs> kami, ni Eric, kami ni Eric sa buto. <laughs> this is a trip, dude. This is a trip. <laughs> they used mga trash cans and mga yero and you guys were playing. Nakalimutan uh, lang pala magdala ng perks eh, no? <laughs> may din na itong yero. Oh, may ano, yung, yung cover ng aircon, kunin mo. Tapos, <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Then, and then I have a song called Demons that you guys recorded. Nag-freeze ulit. Oo nga eh. Wait, I'm gonna try something lang. Sige lang. Sige lang. Ayan. <laughs> it's frozen. Pero yung audio yata nandiyan. Hello? Yeah. Oh, May man. audio. Yun. Can you hear? Yep. Major frozen siya. It's weird. Pero um, okay na. Ngayon. Um, should I continue? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Yun. And then, meron akong folk song dun. Demons. So, all influences nandun na ano, to, uh, who, who I was. Formative. Year. So yun yung basic concept nung ano nung nung album na yun. Kaya nga yung tawag din was a, a, a new string. Bagong pathway parang ganun. <laughs> so after like all your uh, all the music that you've done, you've also you also have your own uh, label, right? Uh, Nemesis Music. It's uh, mm. your, would you call it a label or a, a parang management? Uh ma- management team siya. It it, it it was born out of necessity because when our, uh, we parted ways with our manager in 2014, well, I, we were in limbo. Like, so who's going to handle us now? So, a eh, yung road manager namin and our head roadie, si Lord and si Carly, parang sabi ko, are you going to leave us or are you going to stay with us? They said, no, we're staying with you. So, oh, might as well, sige, upgrade na. Kayo na yung magdala sa amin. And then nagtulungan na lang kaming tatlo and also the band, my band said tulungan na lang kami na self manage na lang tayo and let's just work work at this together. And then eventually we started doing events, we started doing our own productions, small bars lang and whatnot. or for urban dub stuff we we would all work on it together. And then eventually like when we do the small productions, we'd invite younger bands. So, dun na lumabas yung mga autotelic. And then they'd sometimes ask us questions on how to go about things. So, parang, why don't we try help these kids with what they're doing? Our style naman of management is very loose. Kumbaga, 
it's still very the same as Urban Dub. Now, we, we will never dictate to the band what they should do. I mean, it always has to come from them because as an artist, you have to know your vision and your goal. Um, what, and what we do in MS is to, is to supplement. Supplement what they already think of. Kumbaga, we will never impose our ideas. Sasabihin lang namin sa kanila, if it's based on our experience, okay, your idea, this won't work, but ito yung compromise na pwede mong gawin for that particular thing. Or, we just execute what they want. Parang ganun. That's our, our job. And then, to handle their day-to-day -day and um, uh, their bookings. Para, kasi syempre, a band shouldn't think about that anymore. All, all they need to think about is to create and to write music and perform. Para... Uh, those other dirt, the dirty work coming na yung... Who's in the roster besides Autotelic? I know Autotelic uh, is there. Urban Dub, Fast Pitch, Autotelic. Okay. Urban Dub, Fast Pitch, Autotelic. Tatlo lang, mahirap marami. <laughs> mahirap marami. And magkakaibang genre. <laughs> At least. Before, uh, before uh, we, we uh, close the show, uh, we uh, we just like to uh, know, uh aside from thanking you, uh, we'd like to ask for uh, five records that changed your life. Five records that changed my life. Oh, tinanu sa akin ni. <laughs> I listed it down. Five records. Okay. Okay. Uh, five cold summer nights. Francis M. Oh. Um, alapa up eraser heads. Uh, Lover, You Should Have Come Over, Jeff Buckley. Bored ng Deftones. And then X Factor ni Lauren Hill. Oh. <laughs> I chose those songs kasi yun yung mga songs na catalysts for me. Like, I listened to those songs and then yun yung parang made me discover other artists, other musicians, or other similar to the genre or similar artists. Pero yun yung mga catalysts. How about the... May sabihin ka, Rames, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Darren. Go about ahead. the five things that you can't live without? Uh, guitar, uh, coffee maker, uh, books, cell phone, and then home training mats. <laughs> okay, last, before we leave, last na last. You, you didn't talk about, uh, you're always posting it, especially with Jacob, yung mixed martial arts. How did you get into it and what does it bring to your life? Ah, uh, Okay. Uh, growing up, because my dad is a uh, uh, lifelong uh, martial artist, a uh, practitioner. Oh, okay. He, he learned it as a kid with his cousins and my grandfather. Uh, tito niya, bale, uh, kapatid ng mom niya, uh, who taught them uh, Arnis first and um, Arnis and uh, Judo. And then, um, so I learned from my dad, and he always encouraged martial arts. Uh, on me and my, my, my siblings. So I started Karate Do, and then eventually when I transferred to Cebu with him and his cousins, mga tito ko and yung mga pinsang ko rin, we all started training together at a very young age. Mm -hmm. now, you know, Arnis and Judo, that was my, you know, so yung the, 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 the love for martial arts already, parang na ingrain na sa akin because it's a, it was a family thing. And then it really helped me in terms of discipline. Uh, and focus, it, it taught me a lot of that. So now, you know, reason why I'm also trying to pass it on to my son. Uh, it really helps him also with his focus and health. Na rin. Of course, uh, health is a big part of it. And then to keep him strong. And then with martial arts, kasi especially with jujitsu, because I learned that now outside of my dad's disciplines, right? I, I pursue that on my own. Um, Pattern recognition, because basically jujitsu is human chess, mm. right? And it's kind of like an RPG game. It's like a video game that you you learn a set of of moves. So basically, for an RPG, you have different yeah. kinds of weapons and dami mong weapons, but you pick the weapons that would fit your character and your, and then you upgrade it, yeah. you hone it and hone. This is why I gravitated towards it. The nerd in me kind of likes that aspect of jujitsu. So. Um, Fashion, choose your own adventure, kumbaga. Kasi, an, siya lang yung martial art kasi na pwede mong i-adapt. Adaptable siya to your height, weight, age, and athletic ability. Oh. So you can choose your own skill sets. Ang daming moves, eh. 
pipiliin mo yung bagay sa'yo. Okay. What's what's your next adventure? What can it, when it, what can we expect from you for the near future? Well, I've been writing again, slowly write. Especially during pandemic, I've been writing mga songs na just to keep me keep me sane. And then um, I'm I'm in the process now of recording these songs. Uh, well, I now label it, so I I, I um the transition in label. And I ended uh, my contract ended with them, and then hindi na rin ako sumama ulit because of my old original boss left na rin the label, and then um, and it's nice to be free. I mean, <laughs> it, I mean you can you can parang inga parang uh, it's a good start na parang back to your your roots na parang you're you're actually just doing it for fun now again. I mean, it's fun naman talaga in general. Pero syempre, when you're in a label and there's expectations, paminsan the pressure still kind of still sort of gets to you. Diba? I know, I'm sure you know what that feels like. Uh, uh, but, I mean, now it's just freeing. Like, I can do whatever I want. Na, if I want to record today, uh, sige, record ako today. And then, happy naman, like, the guys from Tower of Doom, like, gave me a home. Sila Carlo and Eric gave me mm-hmm. a home. Na, sige, punta ka dito, dito ka mag-record. So I'm very grateful to them that um, they gave me that opportunity. Abangan namin yan. Anyway, thank you wag, for... Wag na lang. <laughs> thank you for Malabas spending lang. your time with us. And thank you for talking you for to that. us. Ganda Malabas ng mga Malabas kwento. Malabas. Hello Malabas. to your family. Hope to see you soon after all of this. Oh, uh, sana, sana we can play in the next year kahit konting tao lang. <laughs> but at least it. I mean... Kahit limited seating, wala, but it's different. Like, I really want to play live. <laughs> different. Thank you. Have a nice thank day. You, Darren, thank you so much for having me, Mike. Salamat. Sa I hope I made sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Salamat. Okay. Okay. Okay.